when did you start working towards Wolfram physics project? Well, okay. So back when I did the, uh, this is, you know, one thing that's sort of perhaps interesting in my life, you know, I've done a lot of historical biography. So I kind of always am interested in the kind of the rhythm and arc of people's lives. But the thing for me is that there are a lot of different pieces that end up in the end all being necessary to build various kinds of towers I'm building. And it almost feels like it's just this bizarre coincidence that all these pieces happen to be there. But, you know, the fact, so I started off, as we talked about before, you know, working on particle physics, theoretical physics, the traditional approach to physics, and I knew that well. And then I started working on these, what I saw as being in some ways more foundational questions about sort of how does complexity arise in the world, got interested in kind of this kind of computational paradigm for thinking about things. I certainly wondered, would that be relevant to fundamental physics? At the beginning, I was like, I don't really see it. You know, we have these definite models. The models that I'm using for cellular automata and things don't really relate to the, to the models. I don't really quite see how to get relativity and quantum mechanics, all those kinds of things. And, and so I, I didn't really pay that much attention to that. Beginning of the 1990s, I'm starting to work on the NKS book. And I'm like, well, let me try this again. And the, the first thing, this was probably 1989, I, I realized is cellular automata sort of have space and time built in. They have this rigid grid of cells. They evolve in distinct time steps. So I thought, you know, if we're really going to go deep down underneath space and time, we're going to have to have some sort of more flexible infrastructure. And so I started thinking about networks as a way to represent kind of the underlying stuff of space and so on. I thought maybe we can do something with this. I started poking around at that around 1990, 1991. Then as I was writing the NKS book, uh, one of the many sections that took a lot longer than expected was a section on fundamental physics, where I thought, well, I might as well just poke at this a bit harder and see whether I can figure out what, what the consequences of thinking about a network as the underlying stuff for representing space is. And I got further than I expected. And I understood how to derive general relativity, the theory of gravity. And I understood how to derive special relativity. I didn't figure out how to derive quantum mechanics. Um, but I figured out a certain amount of stuff about how fundamental physics might work and how space might be an emergent feature of the world, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that was, a, um, uh, that was beginning of the 90s. And, and, uh, and then I kind of packaged that up, put it in the NKS book as one part of chapter nine of the book. Um, okay, book comes out. My physics friends hate that part of it, just vehemently, violently hate it. And um, uh, and then I, you know, right after the book came out, I was I was like, well, maybe I should try explore this because I had intended. I said I'm going to say a certain amount about this in the book, and then I'm going to explore it further. It was very. Um, it was one of these cases where I've done enough business to realize that, you know, it's if you're going to do a business, you need customers. And, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to do this fundamental theory of physics, and who are my customers? And it's like, my customers are, are physicists, and they hate this. So it's like, why am I doing this? You know, there are a lot of things I'm, I can do, which I think are very interesting, that are things where people will say, thank you for doing that. And that's kind of a nice feeling, as opposed to we hate it type thing. So, so I kind of, 2003, 2004, right after the book came out, I did do a bit more work on, on fundamental physics, but then it kind of petered out and I got involved in Wolfram Alpha and I, I d didn't pursue that. Okay, so then we get to, uh, well, about, what was it, 2018 maybe. Um, no, it was actually earlier than that. It was, it was maybe f 20, I don't know, 2012 maybe, something like that, 2013. Every year for the last, um, uh, since 2003, We've done a, an annual summer school where we bring in a bunch of folks from around the world. And we get very interesting people. And uh, originally, it was we developed it because people, when the New Kind of Science book came out, people kept on writing to me saying, oh, we want to learn more about this. We want to collaborate with you about this. And I'm like, how am I going to deal with this? We said, let's start the summer school and invite them all to come there. That worked very well. Over the years, it kind of segued into more of a technology, having more technology component, and so on. Anyway, this, this young Russian fellow named Max Piskunov comes to the summer school, 
and he really wants to. He says, I read your chapter nine of the physics book, of the NKS book. I really want to work on that stuff. And it's like, okay, fine. So he did some project about it. And he's like, you really should work on this. And it's like, well, I'd like to, but I'm working on other things. Um, and so he wanted to go to graduate school in the US. Uh, studying that, he ended up studying something quite different, um, and uh, which was a shame. But anyway, then, then, um, uh, then, uh, well, let's see. Then, then it gets to maybe 2018, and uh, Max is kind of back, and he says, "I really want to work on this stuff." And I say, "Okay, fine." You know, uh, sort of start trying to re, you know, get the software that I developed back in in the 1990s and so on you know, make it more streamlined, let's at least get that part of it under control. And then I was thinking about it, and I had an idea that was a pretty technical idea, actually, about hypergraphs and things. And I realized that one of the impediments that I'd seen back in the 1990s, we could get around that. So it's like, okay, let's implement this. Okay, so that was going kind of slowly. And then um, 2019, uh, we have a summer school, and there's a young chap called Jonathan Gorard who had come to a previous summer school, actually, and um, uh, he, um, these two young physicists basically were like, I tell them about this kind of, you know, minor, you know, somewhat technical advance that I made. And they're like, you've got to do this project. This project is, you know, and by the way, you know, we'll help you do this. Um, and so I'm like, okay, fine, let's, let's try and do it. And then actually I, then I getting old, so I had my 60th birthday. And so I have a birthday party. So a bunch of people, friends of mine come, including a bunch of physicists. And so I gave a totally dreadful, my wife said it was absolutely awful speech. Um, and, uh, uh, and one of the things I'm, I'm talking about is, okay, I've done a bunch of stuff, you know, I'm going to do more stuff. And one of the things I want to do is come back to this project about physics. Um, actually, uh, and then turns out nobody remembered I'd said that, but I remembered I'd said that. And so that gave me sort of an extra push to, okay, I'm going to try and do this project for real. I was, um, and so we started doing it and it went incredibly much better than expected. I mean, I, things that I thought would be like 50 years away just like fell into place. Like, and, and one of the things actually, Dick Feynman always used to say this, you know, if you have a model and you're trying to explain more things and every time you've got a new thing to explain, you have to add a new piece to your model to explain it. That's kind of bad news for the model. But exactly the opposite happened. Every time we looked at a different area, it's like it just follows and it just works. It's kind of like, well, this is, this is going to be it because this is, you know, too many things fall into place. They're really never seen anything like that before. Just very, um, and I was telling these, these young guys who were working with me, you know, it's like, have fun this time. You'll never see anything like it before, uh, again. You know, it's, it, it doesn't, I've never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was um, actually, um, I think Jonathan pointed out to me that I gave this TED talk in 2010 where I talked about um, various things and I, and I kind of had this slide where I talked about, um, uh, oh, you know, things that I want to do. And one of them was the physics project. And so, okay, there we were in early 2020 and I'd said in this TED talk, you know, within 10 years, we might be able to sort of hold in our hand the fundamental theory of physics. And I'd completely forgotten that I'd said that, right? And even though a couple of million people watched that, that video, it's like, and only about two actually followed up. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, which is kind of another thing that one sort of learns about the world. You put these things out there. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, I've had this experience many times. You you put out something which is conceptually a bit complicated and, you know, people say, oh, that's exciting. And then nobody does anything about it. Um, and, you know, you kind of have, you have to do it yourself if you want to see something happen. So uh, anyway, the, the um, that was, so then uh, we, we almost got within the 10 year kind of, you know, uh, we almost released the physics project within 10 years of that, that TED talk we missed by a couple of months and also, uh, you know, there was this annoying pandemic that happened that was just, you know, we were just about to release stuff about the physics project in March of 2020. 2020 and then it was kind of like pandemic is happening. The world might be ending. Um, well, even if the world's ending, we're going to live stream a bunch of stuff about physics and people seem to have fun with that. And that was uh, turned out not to be such a bad time 
to be describing what was going on. And it was kind of, you know, how far should we get with this project before we release it? I felt like we had the, the main arc of what was going on. And then there were, it turned out there was, there was even more to be figured out, even more that sort of was a consequence of what we'd already figured out there. But, uh, but then there's just, you know, there's lots of people working on it now and there's going to be, need to be lots more before it's all figured out. And, you know, I think the thing that it's kind of a, a long time sort of arc of science type of thing, you know, people have been arguing about is the universe discrete or continuous since antiquity? And, you know, back 100 years ago or so, a little bit more than 100 years ago, kind of people discovered, yep, matter really is discrete. There are discrete molecules. Then light really is discrete. There are photons. Space never quite made it as a discrete thing. I think, you know, the big thing that's that's going to happen, I undoubtedly going to happen, I just don't know when, is we're going to see, you know, what, what really clinched it for, for, for matter was the discovery of Brownian motion or the realization of what Brownian motion was. Brownian motion, little, you know, look through a microscope at little pollen grains in water and you see these little discrete kicks and those are water molecules hitting these grains. And it had been known, that effect had been known for 100 years. Nobody knew what it was. That around 1900, that became clarified what it was and that it was a sign of the discrete structure of matter. And I have, you know, my expectation is we're going to see the same thing for space. We're going to see something which is the final indication of the discrete structure of space. Actually, it may be an effect we've known for 100 years, but just not interpreted that way. And uh, that's, you know, that, that, but we don't know the scale, just like people didn't know how big molecules were. We don't know the scale of how difficult it's going to be to see that. But that's one of, I mean, that's one of the corners of where you can kind of see, yep, it really works that way. But I have no doubt. I mean, whether, whether the scale is such that it's going to be in my lifetime, I don't know. But, um, you know, it's, it's going to work that way. I mean, it's, and by the way, it's not like, you know, it's a funny thing about the way that science progresses, that people are convinced, no, no, space is continuous. But back in the early days of quantum mechanics, you know, many people were entertaining the possibility that space was discrete. In fact, you know, Einstein had this nice quote from 1916 that people have sent me endless times, where he kind of wrote in some letter to somebody, you know, in the end, it will turn out space is discrete, but we don't yet have the tools methodology to study that kind of question. Mm -hmm. And okay, 100 years later, we do. And, you know, turns out that seems to be the way that things work. But that's, um, uh, I mean, for me, what's been sort of interesting, I suppose, is, is that both with Wolfram Alpha and with the Physics Project, I felt about them, you know, I didn't know they were going to work. So the fact that they worked was a big bonus. It wasn't like, for example, with Mathematica or even with the NKS book, where I kind of knew, you know, I go in this direction, I do these things, I'm going to have this thing. So it was sort of, both of those projects were sort of a bit psychologically different um, in the sense that they were like, okay, world, it happened to work. As opposed to, I've been building to this, I know it's going to work. You know, I think, for example, all the stuff we've done with computational language, Wolfram language and so on, that's much more in the category of, I know it's going to work. It's not, you know, that it's not, I don't have a question about, is it really going to be the case that all these different fields are going to have, you know, a computational X for all X? No, I know that's going to be the case. There's no risk, there's no doubt. It's only a matter of time scale. 